Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Poonam Chavla, an assistant professor with Maharaja Agrasen Institute of Management Studies in Rohini. Today we are going to discuss on the interesting subject of difference between training development, education and learning. The learning outcomes associated with this module are introduction to learning, training and development and education. Difference between training and development, education and learning followed by benefits of learning and then followed by the summary of the module. Let us discuss what is introduction to training. Training constitutes a basic concept in human resource development. It is considered with developing a particular skill to a desired standard by instruction and practice. Training is a highly useful tool that can bring an employee into a position where they can do their job correctly, effectively and consciously. Training is the act of increasing the knowledge and skill of an employee for doing a particular job. There are various definitions of training. Let us discuss the definition of training given by Beach. Beach defines training as the organized procedure by which people learn, knowledge or enhance their skill for a definite purpose. Training here refers to the teaching and learning activities carried on for the primary purpose of helping members of an organization to acquire and apply the knowledge, skills, abilities and attitudes needed by a particular job and organization. A widely used definition of training has been given by Flippo which says training is the act of increasing and enhancing the skills of an employee for doing a particular job. Why do we need to train people? Every organization should provide training to all the employees irrespective of their qualifications and skills. Let us discuss why the specific need for training arises. The possible reasons could be number one, environmental changes, organizational complexity, number three, human relations, Number four, to match employee specifications with the job requirements and organizational needs. And number five, change in the job assignment. What is the importance of training in organizations? Is it really necessary to impart training? Yes. Training of employees and managers is absolutely essential in this changing environment. It is an important activity of human resource development which helps in improving the competency of the employees. Training provides lot of benefits to the employees like improvement in efficiency and effectiveness, development of self-confidence and assists everyone in self-management. The stability and progress of the organization always depends on the training imparted to the employee. Training becomes mandatory under each and every step of expansion and diversification. It is necessary to mention here that training can enhance the quality and reduce the wastages to the minimum. Training and development is very essential to adapt to the changing and dynamic environment. Let us discuss what is the purpose of training. The purpose of training is to provide the ability to undertake a task or job, to improve productivity and workforce flexibility, to improve safety and quality, to develop the capability of the workforce. Now let us define development. Development is more long term in nature. It often includes education in philosophical and theoretical concepts. It is aimed at developing relationships often for the purpose of enhancing leadership skills. The more general and non-tangible 
aspects are taken into consideration in development. Let us look at the meaning of development intricately. It means the systematic use of scientific and technical knowledge to meet specific objectives or requirements. It is an extension of the theoretical or practical aspects of a concept, design, discovery or invention. It is the process of economic and social transformation that is based on complex cultural and environmental factors and their interactions. It is the process of adding improvements to a parcel of land such as grading, subdivisions, drainage, access, roads, utilities. Let us look at the purpose of development in a more clearer way. More productive management and leadership come up from better educated and informed managers. Research has shown that the performance of managers can be improved through providing them enhanced knowledge by changing their attitude and by increasing their capability and skill. The purpose of development is to improve leadership effectiveness through planned and structured learning. A planned approach to developing managers and leaders will enable the growth of managers. It will also provide for the future needs of the business or organization. Slide number 17, education. Let us define education. By the term education, we mean learning in the classroom to acquire certain knowledge. Education does not equal to schooling, but it refers to what a person gains while he is in school or college. It is aimed to deliver knowledge about facts, events, values, beliefs, general concepts, principles, etc. to the students. This helps in developing a sense of reasoning, a sense of understanding, judgment and intellect in an individual. The lessons learnt during the process of education helps a person to face future challenges and it prepares a person for future jobs. Nowadays, education is not confined to classroom learning only, but new methods are implemented that offers practical knowledge about the world. There are various phases of education like kindergarten, primary, high school, higher secondary, undergraduate, postgraduate, etc. Certificates or degrees are awarded to the students when they clear a particular level of education. Let us define learning. Learning is a measurable and relatively a permanent change in behavior through experience, instruction or study. Whereas individuals learning is selective in nature Group learning is essentially political. Its outcomes depend largely on power playing in the group. Learning itself cannot be measured, but certainly its results can be. In the words of Harvard Business School psychologist Argaris, learning is detection and correction of error. Where an error means any mismatch between our intentions and what actually happens. Let us look at the characteristics of learning. Learning is the process of absorbing information and retaining it with the goal of enhancing skills and abilities in order to achieve goals. Learning is what we go through when we want to be equipped for non-specific and unexpected situations and the two are not mutually exclusive in nature. While you do learn to do something specific, you are also inadvertently equipped with the knowledge and skills to face future challenges and implications. In essence, Learning is all about equipping a person to tackle not just today's issues but preparing him to creatively come up 
with ways and means so that he can tackle issues that come to him in the future. Let us try to understand learning with some examples, some daily life examples. When you were a little kid, did you learn how to ride a bike? Did you learn how to do long division methods or learn the capital cities of different countries? How about learning how to drive a car when you were a little older? How to do laundry? We use the term learning all the time in our everyday life. But it is imperative to remember here that within the field of educational psychology, this term learning is actually a very specific term with a specific definition. Different people use different words to define learning within educational psychology. However, in general, we are talking about a step-by-step -step process in which an individual experiences permanent, lasting change in knowledge, behavior or ways of processing the world. Let us look at the intricate differences between training, development and learning. The differences between training and development tend to lie in timing. Training is the process by which people are taught critical skills. Participants gain knowledge to carry out their current responsibilities. The goal is to improve performance in the short term. Traditionally, training has com comprised a set of learning and skills or predictable actions or behavior. This change in skills and behavior is usually aimed at enhancing the current job performance of an employee. Training may also prepare an individual for a potential job or role. Development not only seeks to improve performance in a role, but it seeks to bring out some form of maturity growth. Development is used to increase the potential of an employee as well as equip them to be better individuals. Training usually requires guidance, what you call instruction. In a series of steps, it takes place to help gain a skill or a set of predictable knowledge. It is often for non-leadership related activities and is aimed at a specific task or job role. The dimensional approach to training and learning and development. The fundamental difference between training and learning and development is that the later takes a multidimensional approach to human resource development. Training, on the contrary, is one-dimensional and is based essentially on what has been referred to as production-centered approach. The person-centered and problem-solving approaches are generally missing from traditional human resource development programs. The traditional employment relationship performance orientation is exclusively based on directly developing the technical skills of the employee. Moving further with the differences between training and learning and development. Yet the unpredictability associated with the contemporary marketplace and the enhanced focus on the customer has elevated the importance of being able to solve unique problems and display initiative. To be flexible and enterprising is now a core capability of the modern employee or this is the core capability he must possess. Apart from displaying appropriate initiative, the dimension of personal development and its impact on overall work performance is now widely understood and accepted. Today's workplace needs a more wide-ranging approach to HRD beyond the reliance on technical training. Personal development stresses an indirect link between the learning experience and work performance. The primary motivation for an organization to invest in the personal development learning is to enhance employees' personal qualities 
that will have a considerable impact on their overall work performance. Unlike the production centered approach, this person centered approach has a more tenuous link to performance. It is based on the theory that capable people make capable employees in a variety of context. This problem solving approach focuses on enhancing the employees capability to solve problems. This approach improves employees ability to make more effective decisions on the job. The rationale for this approach is the direct and indirect connection between problem solving capability and organizational performance. This is a tabular representation which explains you easily that what is the difference between training and development. Let us go through some points like we can say training focuses on current jobs whereas development focuses you for prepares you or focuses you on future jobs. Training is a one shot deal whereas development is a continuous ongoing process. Training is usually imposed on employees whereas development activities are supplied through management development programs are generally voluntary in nature. There are other differences which are visible and you can read them through. This is a tabular representation of what is the difference between training and education. Like training is a method of skill development whereas education is a typical form of learning. Training is based on practical application whereas education is based on theoretical orientation. Training is narrow in nature, education is wide in nature. Training involves job experience and education involves classroom learning. Now, how training benefits a firm? Training leads to improved profitability and positive attitude. It enhances the job knowledge and skills of employees at all levels. It improves the motivation and morale of the workforce. It helps people identify their organizational goals and it also helps them to intermingle their personal goals into it. It helps create a better corporate image. It fosters authenticity, it fosters openness and trust. It enhances relationship between boss and subordinate. It aids in organizational development. It helps prepare guidelines for the work. It aids in understanding and carrying out organizational policies. It provides information for future needs in all areas of the organization. Organizations tend to get more effective in decision making and problem solving skills. It helps in developing leadership skills. It helps in enhancing productivity and quality of work. It helps to keep the costs down in many areas like production, personal and administration. It develops a sense of responsibility. It improves the labor management relationships. It creates an appropriate climate for growth and communication. It helps in enhancing organizational communication. It helps the employees to adjust to change. It helps in handling conflict, thereby helping to prevent stress and tension. It eliminates suboptimal behavior. Benefits of training and development to the individual, which will in turn ultimately benefit the organization. Training and development helps the individual in making better decisions and effective problem solving. Through proper training and development, the motivational variable of recognition, achievement, growth, responsibility and advancement are internalized and operationalized. Aids in encouraging and achieving self-development and self-confidence. It helps a person to handle stress, tension, frustration and conflict. It provides information for enhancing leadership skills, knowledge, communication skills and attitudes. It also enhances your job satisfaction and increases your commitment towards the job. 
it moves a person towards personal goals while simultaneously improving his or her interactive skills. It satisfies the personal needs of the trainer as well as the trainee. It provides the trainee an avenue for growth and a say in his or her own future. It develops a sense of growth in learning. It helps a person to develop speaking and listening skills and also writing skills. It helps eliminate fear and inhibitions which people face while attempting new tasks. Benefits in personal and human relations, intra-group and intergroup relations and policy improvement. It improves communication between groups and individuals. It aids in orientation for new employees and those taking new jobs through either through transfer or promotion. It provides information on equal opportunity and affirmative action. It provides information on other government laws and administrative policies. It helps in enhancing your interpersonal skills. It helps in developing organizational policies rules and regulations, it enhances the morale of the employee and helps building up cohesiveness in groups. It provides a good climate for learning, growth and coordination. It makes the organization a great place to work and live. Let us look at the summary of the module. Training and development activities are designed, considerable cost is taken notwithstanding to impart specific skills, abilities and knowledge to employees. Distinction is often made between training and education and between these two and development also. Training refers to imparting specific skills, whereas education is the process of theoretical learning in classrooms. Development on the other hand refers to learning opportunities designed to help employees grow and evolve a vision about the future. All the three form part of training and development, only the target groups who are taking this program of employees differ. Education of course is needed for all employees irrespective of their level in the hierarchy. It can be well appreciated that the process of training is no different than that of management development. Training is as much as an art as a science. A logical approach to an emotional aspect of human nature is something that defines training very well. To achieve desirable end results, we first need to define the objectives of training in a logical manner. Next. We need to give it a form before passing it on to others at an opportune time, place and in a manner to stimulate and encourage the recipient to go for it on his or her own. It is important to remember that good things don't just happen. We need to work for them with sincerity and perseverance. Responsibility to train others is just as necessary as the responsibility to learn. Thank you very much. I hope you understood the module well.